G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I've had a chance to get on with this uh, little steam engine while I'm building. And you see the bench is a bit of a mess. And I've got to the stage where I've made the boiler. And I thought I'll just give you a bit of a heads up on where I'm at and what's happening. So I'm coming close on the boiler. So here's the boiler made out of brass. That's the feed pipe going in for the the uh, the cylinder, which is on this end. That's the the piston. It's going to have a 20 mil stroke, approximately. So I've cut that to length. Next job will be to uh, put a slot on the end for the con rod to go in. So I'll mill all that on the on the Chinese lathe using the a little uh, 775 powered uh, milling, grinding, drilling gadget I made up years ago. And uh, yeah, this is going to be okay. The plan, <clears throat> the plan is that the uh, rotary valve will hang off the side here. But it'll have to stand away from the, the top of the, the boiler as well. So it's going to sort of sit out here and I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do it. I originally had this so I was going to move the cylinder across to the edge more to give more room for the rotary valve but it's going to hang out anyway so I thought ah, it'd look better and probably be easier to do if I just put the cylinder in the middle and that way I can either mount the, the support for it on the side coming up and across or I can have it half and half I haven't quite worked it out so this was the original end for this which was offset and it would have brought that over there but I gave that idea away I, I just thought nah it's really hardly worth the effort I'll do it this way I think it'll, it'll uh, be better and I originally tried to solder this boiler together and a hell of a job. So I gave that away and I silver soldered it. And that's much better. You can see it's done a pretty good job. By silver soldering the boiler, then when you want to solder anything else onto it, it's not going to fall apart on you. You know, it's the trouble. If, you use, if your base object is soldered and then to do more soldering on it, well, the whole thing can start coming apart. But with silver solder, as the temperature is way, way higher than regular solder, um, that doesn't happen. The other drama I had too was I've got two sorts of solder. I've got this stuff, high temperature solder I got off of eBay from China. And I've got regular electrical solder. And believe me, it's chalk and cheese. This high temperature stuff is an absolute mongrel to use it, uh, it oxidises, that's the trouble if you run it in okay but then if you put more heat on it it can then oxidise and it will then separate whereas if you use electrical solder um, that, doesn't, that doesn't happen it works fine so yeah, so we're on the way we're getting there and uh, yeah I've got all the bits dragged out and I've been using all the uh, all three of the lathes, I'll show you those. So here's the Chinese lathe, and she's covered in brass. A lot of brass uh, residue there. Makes a hell of a mess, that stuff. Once again, you can see this plate I've got on here, how effective that is at keeping the ways clean. Have a look at that. I mean, it's only brass, it won't do any damage, but fitting one of these things on is the best thing you can do, and it goes under the chuck, no problem. Great asset, you want to do it. So yeah, Chinese lathe's been getting a big workout. It's going to be used to, to do the milling uh, for the con rod and the, uh, the end of the piston. And I've been using the Shorblin as well. So here's the old Shorblin. Once again, it's been used for collet work. And you can see the brass down there. Uh, once, once again, brass makes a hell of a mess. It, uh, you don't take much off, but it seems to make a huge... <laughs> A huge amount of mess. 
So this old girl is really super handy. And then I even used the share line to do uh, a really small job on it. So here's the little baby share line. These are wonderful little machines, hey? Uh, awesome. And, uh, oh, I forget what I machined on that, but anyway, that'll be getting lots of use because I'll be making up some um, connectors and things for the brass. A uh, copper pipes. Right, well, here's the feed pipe into the cylinder. And that's going to feed in from the rotary valve, which would be sitting here somewhere. And I would, I would like to bring it down the pipe down and run it along the bottom and then put it into the rotary valve and that way I can superheat the steam you know where I'll give it extra heat from the burner which is going to be underneath here but that so that would mean it would feed into the rotary valve from the bottom but I really need to feed into the rotary valve from the top for the uh, the steam coming out of the boiler so it really wants a riser coming up from here, going down into the uh, rotary valve. And I'll have to have a bit of a look to see whether I can make the rotary valve with opposing ports or not. It may not be doable. I might have to bring this pipe along and then back up and in, or I might even have to come up over the top and down not quite sure how I'm going to work at it. It's a matter of uh, I'll have to do some drawings and just have to play around to see. And then, so the whole thing will just basically be on a couple of supports, right through there, hanging out here. 20 mil um, stroke, and that means and he actually has a, a small flywheel here, like a crank wheel, and then you have a bigger wheel out here for your main any vibration you know inertia function yeah and then a filler in the top and a vent um, a blow off valve as well which I've got one somewhere lying around so yeah moving on right well I'm about to mill the uh, the end out of the the piston to take the conrod uh, end to do this got it mounted in collets once again collets are your friend I've got dial indicator pointing at reference point there and I've got a secondary reference point here which is 90 degrees out so I've got the backing plate marked with two uh, positions for 90 degrees because that, that's the the angle you use the most so once I've drilled the slot in it with the mill, I can then rotate it 90 degrees exactly and then I can drill for the, the little screw to go through, which has to be of course 90 degrees difference. So yeah, we're good to go. Got a carriage stop for my for my depth of travel. And I'm gonna work my way in through the side. There's two ways to do this, you can come in through the side or you can spin the whole thing around and come in from the end, go do this sort of action, but we'll go this way and uh, it should do a nice job. So yeah, give it a go. And I'll drill 2.5 mil hole through there so that we can tap the thread 
can see I've got another mark here as well. So I've got the old drive plate mark in a few places. But uh, yeah, it's all handy. All right. I'll swap out the uh, the 4 mil milling bit and I'll put in a 2.5 mil uh, drill so that I can tap, drill and tap for a 3 mil bolt. That's what we're going to use. This little unit is so handy for this little work and it's absolutely brilliant. And I'll just tap it straight in there. Put a 3 mil Allen had a bolt in there with a little sleeve on it to protect the thread of the bolt. And that'll be a Conrod um, journal, I suppose you could call it. Right, well, we're making some headway. I've uh, finished making up the, uh, the piston, so that will go in there. And this is the support for the rotary valve body. So that will fit into this. So basically there'll be a little drive disc on the end here. So I'll cut this off to length, uh, fit it into the bottom of this. Drive shaft to go through, drive disc on the air flywheel on the other end, and uh, yeah, just a matter then of plummet. And I'm not quite sure exactly how I'll plummet. I'd like to run it through the uh, the feed pipe for the similar through the flame to uh, keep things hot. But yeah, it's going all right. And these are rings that will mount it, so there'll be one on each end. There's steel, and they'll mount it uh, vertically, because it will be running horizontally. Um, so these will, I made them out of steel, that way I can move them around, and I can braze on the, uh, the steel supports. So I haven't decided whether I'll use uh, flat stuff or square stuff, but yeah, we're getting there. It's coming along quite nicely, actually, and uh, yeah, my soldering's working out good, and so is the, uh, the silver soldering as well. So yeah, this is all just made up out of bits and pieces, you know, and uh, save all your brass and... It'll all come in handy one day, you know. And here's a shot of my workbench. This is all the bits I've been playing around with. I was trying to figure out how I'd mount the uh, the rotary valve. I was thinking about using flat stuff, but I think a bit of tube is going to look really nice, so I'm going to do it. It should be strong enough to uh, take the load. And uh, but particularly by the time you get the feed pipes onto it, it'll all brace it up, so... Yep, and use my little knocker to tap things in a position. I use this quite a lot, and uh, <laughs> see how a whack on the end. I've used it as a with a hammer or something, but uh, it's a handy little thing to make. It's very controllable. These are these are good, better than a hammer in a lot of situations. You can get in, and you're not going to smack it too too hard. So good good gadget. Okay, well that's about it for now. It's time for a beer, I think. So, yeah, all come along nicely and 
sort of slowly stepping my way through it, you know. No plans once again. None of my <laughs> engines ever have plans. I mean, that'd be too easy. So, uh, yeah. All right. That's it for now. See you next time. Cheers.